in John chapter 20, verse 20, he breathed upon them and he said, Receive ye the Spirit. The same Jehovah Elohim that was responsible for the breath in the book of Genesis was the same one that was responsible for the breath in the book of John. And the second layer of breath gives us access to spirit-powered existence, Holy Ghost-powered existence. A new um, sense of perception results from that investment. I remember um, it was Watchman Nee that said the proof of life is consciousness. And by the time you receive the divine life into your spirit man on the account of your regeneration, it brings a new type of consciousness. That's what Jesus was talking about in the book of John chapter 3 when it says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot perceive the kingdom of God. So we have a new perception. We have a new consciousness that is brought into our ecosystem. And the extent to which you excel on the strength of the investment of the second layer of breath is how well you develop that consciousness, is how well you live according to the consciousness that is brought into your vessel on the account of the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, that regenerates your human spirit. Then in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, we see the account of the day of Pentecost. And as at this time, Jehovah Elohim, even Jesus, had ascended into the heavenlies and uh, he released a breath from heaven. And so the account of the day of Pentecost was that there was a, a sound that came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. So we want to analyze this layer of spiritual reality, the third level of breath. And this third level of breath is supposed to usher us into the fullest and the most potent form of our dominion capacity. Our dominion capacity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said that there was no king in the nation of Israel <clears throat> that was licensed to rule without an anointing. And so the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Then territory is mentioned. You will notice that uh, the, the investment in this case is the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the result of that investment is territorial. There are territories that you are supposed to influence on the account of the investment that God has made available. All right, I want to read the scripture to us and then we'll go deeper on the third layer of breath. And uh, I trust God for utterance to be able to communicate the mind of God. First Peter chapter 1, beginning from verse number 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come to you. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed 
that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them which have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us that did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things angels desire to look into hallelujah so it means this dimension is not within the syllabus of angels it, it's a it's it's something that is interesting to them they would have loved to research it they would have loved to understand it but it wasn't given to them to understand it they were restricted it was named a classified dimension to angels they seek to research into it are you there all right so first and foremost we need to have a very good picture of where jesus is right now and the realities that are bound in his current atmosphere and in order for us to achieve that we may need to consult the book of ephesians chapter one now the last scripture i'm going to touch is this one i just read because i need to explain to us the implication of of we having the holy ghost sent down from heaven upon us the holy ghost sent down from heaven that's how it's rendered here and there is an implication so i showed you the back end of the scripture that peter employed in attempting to describe and to interpret the things that happened on the day of pentecost and the scripture that was uh, the back end scripture was the scripture i read to you yesterday psalms 110 verse number one two three are you there a, a scripture that reveals how that the father was offering the son an administrative portfolio and how that the father promised the son that is, you sit in this administrative office until he himself brings his enemies to his feet. Are you there? And we saw that the way the Father was going to accomplish that was to send the rod of his strength out of Zion. That is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will have to leave Zion, God's administrative headquarters, and come to become operational in the earth it is the experience of the receipt of the holy ghost in the earth that was spoken about in the book of first peter chapter 1 verse 12. are you with me okay um turn your bible quickly to ephesians i just have one hour to do this business so i hope to do it well ephesians chapter one fifteen says wherefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention for you of you in my prayers that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. I hope you know why we are reading this scripture. It's to investigate the location where Jesus currently is. Stay with me. Stay with me if you can. Having, if we are able to investigate the location where Jesus is, it is from that location that Jesus sent his spirit. And the authority that the spirit has is drawn from the location where Jesus is currently seated. Verse number 20. Verse number 20 begins to give us an insight into that location. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. So the location is the right hand of God. And I told you that the terminology right hand is an ancient kingdom register, which means the place of administration. All right, raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Second thing is that Jesus is in the heavenly places. That's why the Bible says that the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Uh, verse 21 says, this place is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now, are you there? Now, I would like you to read verse 22 and meditate on it to see if it sounds familiar. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. The statement, putting all things under his feet, looks like the promise that the father made to the son in the book of Psalms 110, verse 1 to 3, where the Bible says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So if you check the scriptures properly, you will see that it speaks about the the dominion of Christ. The dominion of Christ. The reason why the Holy Spirit left heaven to come into the earth is to make the throne that Jesus was assigned to efficacious and potent upon the face of the earth. If you have read the book of Psalms 110 verse 1 to 3 properly, in verse 3, a statement was made. Psalms 110 verse 3, it says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. You see, when the Holy Spirit left heaven, are you there? He left heaven with a mandate because the environment from whence he left is an environment of government. The environment from whence he left is an environment of established kingdom order. The environment from whence he left, his authority was not being contested because the place in which he is domiciled is far above principalities and powers. The environment from whence the Holy Ghost left is an environment that is established in rulership, established in government, where the will of God can be accomplished to the fullest extent and God can exercise his authority unhindered whatsoever. That's the environment from whence the Holy Spirit left. 
And the agenda of the Holy Spirit is to make the earth realm exactly like that environment in heaven. And if that is going to happen because the enemies of Christ, people that do not subscribe to his authority, they find expression here in this realm. But the Holy Spirit, even though he has come to, are you there? So the mandate that the Holy Spirit carries, now that he is dispatched from heaven to come into the earth, is not a mandate, not a casual mandate, it's a mandate of rulership. Rule down in the midst of thy enemies. You can see that the language spoken here is the language of dominion, the language of conquest, rule, subdue, bring to obedience, break the resistance. Huh? Attack the rebellious and bring them to order. So that's the kind of mandate that the Holy Ghost came into the earth to accomplish. But you see, the Holy Ghost alone cannot accomplish that mandate because this realm is not designed for spirits. This realm is three-dimensional. It's a realm of time, it's a realm of space, and it's a realm of matter. And we can verify this from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 39. This realm is a realm of space, it's a realm of time, and it's a realm of matter. It's not a realm for spirits. It's not designed for spirits. The spirit beings have their own realm. It's invincible. Just like we have, we have roads here and infrastructure that makes three-dimensional life easy, makes it comfortable, makes it workable. They also have their own infrastructure. And it's not roads and pipe bone water. They have their own infrastructure in that realm that is designed to enhance spirit existence, spirit life. This realm is not for spirits, but spirits can operate here through priesthood. The only way spirit beings can become operational within this realm is when human beings grant them access to operate. All right? And that's why the book of Psalms 110 verse 3 says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. The day of thy power referred to in that scripture was the day of Pentecost. That when people become willing to receive the impartation of the Holy Ghost, the day of thy power comes. The Holy Ghost, who is sent down from heaven, will come upon them. His abilities will be transmitted into them. And they are the ones that are going to partner with the Holy Spirit to fulfill that mandate of conquest. That mandate of subjugation. They are, they are elements, they are bandits that do not subscribe to the law of the land. They dwell in the forest. They are outlaws and they cause menace. They cause tragedy. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and empower you as his agent to enforce the policy that is responsible for his coming down. And that policy is a policy of government. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. When we talk about this empowerment, are you, are you still with me? So the context here is warfare. There, is, there are hordes of the kingdom of darkness and humans that have aligned with these hordes to occasion realities that are inconsistent with the will of God. And the Holy Spirit comes from heaven with that mandate of dominion. And if we decide to partner with him, we become the agencies that he uses to accomplish this work of government. He wants to establish the government of God on earth the same way it is established in the heavens. You will notice, are you there? Yes. The first message of the kingdom that was ever preached in the Bible was repent for the kingdom, the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. Repent for the reign of the heavens 
is at hand. What exactly is the meaning of the reign of heaven? The kingdom of the heavens. Repent. For the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. Are you there? Oh, you are not following. You are not following. Repent. For the reign of heaven is at hand. Now was heaven's attempt to begin the policy of colonizing the earth. And heaven's attempt to colonize the earth began from releasing someone from heaven, a personality from heaven, to come into this earth with the purpose of colonizing the earth, namely Jesus. So when Jesus walked this world, the objective of his manifestation was to create a premise, create a pedestal through which God's dominion can litter the entire earth. He began by teaching the people that had his ear about how the kingdom of God functions. If you check the entire lectures that Jesus had, the entire teaching that Jesus did, all he was doing was teaching about the kingdom of heaven, the principles of the kingdom of heaven, the workings of the kingdom of heaven, all the dynamics of the kingdom of heaven. That's what he taught about. And the reason why he, and even when he resurrected from the dead and had 40 days of opportunity to educate his disciples, the Bible speaking in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says that the subject that Jesus taught during the 40 days of capacity building exercise that took place in the book of Acts, the theme of his lecture was the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Can you see, are you seeing the agenda? Now, you are not seeing the agenda very well. Now, on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God came from heaven, it was not a different agenda. It was still, Jesus had given us insight into how the workings of the kingdom of God is and all those education that Jesus gave. There was an empowerment that the, of the Holy Spirit that came from heaven to empower us to actualize the very things that Jesus taught as to how it will look like when the kingdom of heaven begins to fully reign upon the face of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is now the empowerment mechanism. The empowerment mechanism to endure us with the resources needed for us to extend the influence of the reign of heaven here on earth. And the meaning of extending the influence of the reign of heaven here on earth means that we are going to come against every contrary entity that is proclaiming and advancing another cause that is contrary to the cause of the kingdom of God. So this is where warfare comes from. Warfare actually began in the spirit realm. Warfare did not begin with human beings. Oh my God. Oh my God. It, it seems the, the weather is affecting your assimilation. But stay with me. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I must do this one. I must do this one. The weather is affecting. You see, the Bible says that there was war in heaven. It was because there was war in heaven that eventually there, there was war upon the face of the earth. Warfare has its origin from the spirit realm. The earth is a mere victim of the spillover of the warfare that was obtainable in the realm of the spirit. And that warfare is now part of the reality that we have on earth. So in order for us, are you there? Yes, the meaning of the war is what I'm trying to make you understand. The meaning of the war is not really, it's not just your prosperity, it's not just your marriage. That's a very secondary matter. Your marriage is important. Your prosperity is important. That you ride the car is important. That you go to Unijos and you have school fees to pay is very important. But there's something deeper than that for which you receive the Holy Ghost. The resource, the spiritual capital in the person of the Holy Spirit was given to you not just so that you will marry. The, your purpose in life is not to marry. 
You came here to marry. That's why you are here. And we are not... Yeah. Oh my God, you are not following me. We are not saying marriage is not legit. I'm just trying to show you the picture, the vision. Because the first defeat we are going to experience, we are going to encounter, is a defeat that came by deception. Where you are looking at the wrong things, you have a wrong goal, you are pursuing the wrong things. Even in ministry, a ministry can be set up and if the conceptualization is not adequately determined, <laughs> all the resources will be deployed in the wrong direction. And because once and again, the people still say Jesus and somebody can get born again in that atmosphere, the Lord will still keep it running. It's not as if they are doing anything that is serious. Are you there? And somebody can still be born again there so he can keep it running. He can fund it. He can release money for them to buy fuel, diesel, in generator to keep the thing going because there is a hope that at least somebody can stumble into salvation from their effort. But the goal, are you there? <laughs> the goal of preaching the gospel has not changed because Jesus is the model preacher. He's the one that even showed us what preaching is about. And he preached about it, the kingdom. And he told us the emphasis of his teaching was that the reign of heaven has come into the earth. He showed us how kingdom people, people that are under the influence of the reign of the heavens. When we were in theological class, our professor was trying to get us to define what it meant to be born again. So, very simple scriptures. He brought some scriptures together. And then he showed us what this scholar said about salvation. This one, this scholar said about salvation. This scholar, what they said about salvation. All right? At least people have researched it. So we are trying to walk the path of their research to see if we can. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. If somebody already knows it, let's study it and know it. All right? So we got a few definitions of salvation. Through the extensive work of a certain scholar, we came to the conclusion that to be born again is to be born from heaven. That's you are not interested, so let me. Let me. I, I, labored, I labored so much to acquire the knowledge I wanted to, <laughs> to give you. <laughs> you are not interested, either. you know. I am very, I don't, I protest when I notice this. I just, I cut it off. I labored, I labored in the night, red. It's not as if the things were new, all right? But I had to read it in order for me to pass. So I had to look for a way to make it exciting. There were old things. It, no, not, no new thing was there, but I had to look for <laughs> a way to make it exciting. And I must look for a way to use that knowledge. If, if I got anything in my practice of ministry. It, it, the scholar that I liked, his own definition of being born again is to be born from heaven. Are you there? Is that bet from heaven that makes you a citizen of heaven? So when we say repent, because the reign of heaven is at hand, God wants to bring that same reign that is in the heaven. You know that reign in the reality of your spirit, because your spirit is plugged into that reign. So you see, if, if the kingdom of God is going to be extended, the first, the first focal point of God's emphasis is the heart of a man. That's the place he conquers first. And then plugs your spirit to the reign of heaven. It means that heaven can manipulate you through the presence of the Holy Ghost that is upon your heart. So you are no longer of this world. Your rhythm, your style, the things that move you, the things that you like, the things that trend for you is different from the drumbeat of the world because you are plugged into a reign, a government, and the 
place where that government is, 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 is domiciled is in the heavens. That's why you are only an ambassador here. But you are a citizen of heaven. What the devil does is that he gets you confused and then he, he makes you define your existence on the strength of the things that are trending in your generation. Even though you are of heaven, but you operate like the earth. If you operate that way, you will not have the ability to challenge the things that are seeking to undermine the kingdom that you represent. If the eyes of the average believer can be open to see that the context we have found ourselves in is a context of war and service to God will require that will extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God, the influence of the kingdom of God through the, the power of the Holy Ghost that is upon our lives. That's the orientation that we That is the goal of our not being raptured after we give our life to Christ so that we can partner with the Holy Spirit to extend the influence of the reign of heaven. See, this is how God does it. God will conquer a man first. Are you there? Conquers a man. After conquering you, you are under the influence of the governor of the heavens who happens to be the Holy Spirit. It is what he says you do. Is where he leads you go. It is what he wants that you choose. Are you there? Then he takes you. He now puts you in custom, Nigerian custom service. You are not, you are not following. He takes you. He puts you in the prisons, Nigerian prison service. In that Nigerian prison service, you will see people that came with Ogugu because the power that they are trying to use to advance their cause in Nigerian prison service is from, is from Enugwe Ezeke. <laughs> I don't have time to tell you stories. But you might be going to that office thinking that... <laughs> One day, the battle in our office became so terrible. It was somebody brought some articles from Shongo to the office. Sacrifice. <laughs> brought sacrifice to the office on Sunday morning. Brought sacrifice to the office from Shongo with some priests. Some ha Shongo. Those priests. What? I don't know what Shongo is. Is he God of iron or thunder? Huh? Thunder. Which one is iron? God of iron. Ogun? Ogun? Now, if Ogun is really Ogun, it means that these followers should not be able to enter an aeroplane because there's iron there. And so, so I don't know how they, those, the agents, the priest, the priest of Ogun, he paid for their transportation. He paid. He, you know how costly it is to move Eh? And Ogun, <coughs> he moved him, <laughs> came to the office, and they were doing the incantation. So somebody forgot a key in the office, and he went to pick it that Sunday morning. Then he met Ogun people there. The, the, the Ogun priest, they called him. They say if this thing leaks, he will just get lost. That is, you, <coughs> you will, he will be lost in Abuja. He will just be moving like this, and you find that. <laughs> So you are going to walk in the prisons with people. They are, they, the people know Ogun. And they are bringing Ogun to the office. You, you know Jesus. You are coming to the office with Jesus. You will think what they are doing in that place is to serve the government and earn salary. That's what you will think. The man working for Ogun is not thinking that way. He wants to dominate. He wants to be able to control even the controller. So that when he calls him, I say, I'm not coming, no. He says, okay, yeah, that's, that's no problem. He wants to dominate the place. That's his goal. But the, the believer wants to collect salary. Because his perspective has been affected by the world system. He no longer knows that he's a sent one that is designed and empowered to bring the reign of heaven 
into his locality. To bring the reign of heaven into your family. To bring the reign of heaven into your business. You say you are running a business, you have not set up an altar there. Meanwhile, the sons of the bond woman will close their business to go to their altar. And they don't care who it is that comes during the time of their devotion. It doesn't matter. But you have no values. You don't know why you are there. You think you are there to make money. Meanwhile, the money you say you are making, the other people that are also coming to make the money, they came with the spirit. Because they have more understanding that the they fight here is a fight for dominion. A fight for dominion. You will see people that say, okay, eight people are eligible. Eight people, no. 20 people are eligible, but we only have eight slots. So you will write this exam. After the exam, if you pass, meanwhile, pass mark is 70. Then you come for interview. Ah. You will think it's the exam that makes people pass. There was somebody that scored 58. Pass mark is 70. The person passed. The person passed. Uh, I don't know whether you live in the moon, but we are still trying to count the ballot papers of the last uh, election. <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah. Hey. You think the sons of, of darkness will allow you to rise? That's what you think. You think the sons of darkness will allow you to advance? That's what you think. You think the witches will allow you to amount to anything. That's what you think. That if you are good to them, you greet them, give them food on Friday. They might consider saying, oh, you are a good woman. Why should we, why should we trouble? You see, it's already rigged. The thing began from the realm of the spirit. The people that are carrying on the will of, of the devil on earth are, are mere victims. Just like you are supposed to be a victim of the Holy Ghost and a victim of his policies, a victim of his agenda. That's where the kingdom principle of warfare comes in. So if you want to re live the real life, according to the scriptures, you should be ready for warfare. And the warfare is not on the strength of your own capacity, but based on the spiritual capacity that you have received in the Holy Ghost. How much of the Holy Ghost do you know in terms of battle? When we come to the real issues, you will see that the church is ignorant. When we come to the trivial issues, so we see that the church is, yes, yes. Ah, let us, economic empowerment, the whole place will be filled up. So maybe at the end of the meeting, we give you a check of 50,000. 50,000. You will see this place everywhere. Because we now live for survival. That's the orientation we have had. And a lot of ministers that are in the labor of the gospel have pointed us in a wrong direction. That breakthrough is the emphasis. Meanwhile, the Bible is saying that when you become focused in doing kingdom business, it, the heavens itself will guarantee that the financial and the material resources you need to advance the kingdom will be allocated to you. When you focus on the main thing and make the main thing the main thing, then your own trivial things like finances will navigate in your direction. Do you realize that when I was still in the service, a time came I was not, I didn't need my salary. Yes, I didn't need my salary to survive. Not because I was a business person. In the service. What I used my salary to do for like 12 years was to push the kingdom forward. Because if I eat one meal a day, it was almost okay. So the money that was there was not for eating because I don't eat much and I don't have a large family. So, but we use the resources to push the kingdom. And when God saw that, I understood. Oh, you know that the agenda is, the, is my kingdom. Okay. Then he now made people, I went for a meeting. So I told the pastor that I will not take prophet's offering. That I came here in honor of him. 
So what he did was that he, he collected my account number and he put it online that, you know, I'm not aware of that. He put it online and said, that number belongs to this preacher. So he said to him. That's how my account number went online. Huh? And people copied it. I started seeing strange alert. alert. <laughs> ah, kum, kum, kum. <laughs> After a short while, I no longer needed salary to get by. I became self-sustaining even before I resigned because my life was focused in advancing the kingdom. Oh, when you focus on the wrong things, because you think prosperity is the goal, you are running after it, you will run sprint for life. So what has your life contributed to the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth? If, if you cannot answer readily, it means you are still part of the rat race. What has your life? Oh, you are living for yourself, for, for makeup. That's what you are living for. Don't worry. When you are 56, I will come and ask you how far. <laughs> the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. The Holy Ghost, the very Holy Ghost had to leave heaven because of this policy to come into the earth to provide empowerment so that we can become his foot soldiers, his infantry, to extend his influence. So when God conquers a man, then he takes the man and he puts him in a territory. The territory can be the Nigerian police force. The territory can be a ministry of agri. The territory can be local government administration. And what he's expecting is for his influence on your life to influence other people. So when they begin to arrange for a bribe, even though your salary is not much, but your conviction is deeper than your desire for money, you tell them, I'm not interested in this. Obviously, you will suffer persecution for many years because of your position. If they now see that you are unreasonably committed to this, your conviction. And it is now impossible to get you to change your mind on the matter. Are you there? Yes. They put you in your own category. Now, it means that you have proven that not everybody is living for bribe, for more money. Ah, You may not know that your conviction has registered some things on people's heart. And because of that, there are questions. And that question now makes the person's heart a fertile ground for the gospel to thrive. You will discover that the evangelist that preached, that he eventually responded to God, is not the one that the credit of the man's conversion is given to. He is given to that person that was able to stand his ground and to represent the kingdom of God by the power of the Holy Spirit and to refuse to go the way of greed, which is the way of the world. Have you been conquered? Is it true that the Holy Ghost has conquered you? You know, it's easy to speak in tongues. It's difficult to stand for God. And it's more difficult to stand for God at the expense of your life. But there were people, our ancestors, people that went before us. The Bible says, eh? they did not accept deliverance. That means they were, they were sentenced to death and given the option of life if they if they deny Jesus, and the Bible says, not accepting deliverance. That's the Christianity of those days. Today, today, people that even preach the gospel have been able to conveniently smuggle in the fact that immorality is allowed. That's our creed now. That's our creed full of compromise. He, don't, he doesn't have any power to challenge the kingdom of darkness. We may not be many, but we will not change. Yes, we will not change. It, it may not be popular, but we will not change. We don't want to trend. I want to be a kingdom man. 
I want to, I want to see the ability that the Holy Ghost gives a mortal like myself to influence nations for Jesus Christ. He said, the people that preach the gospel to you, they preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. They were not naked. They were galvanized. They were not doing it in their own power. They had empowerment to accomplish that task. To what? To what did God give you the Holy Ghost? In your own context, in your own world. Why? Because if there's no evidence that your life bears witness. Now, let's ask ourselves, to what? And for what were you given the Holy Ghost? To what? After discipling people, discipling people will just send them on youth service for one year. They come back demonized. They are unbelievers. You need to cast out. They are shouting. Demons are going out. Shouting. They couldn't even maintain their conviction for 12 months. The question is to what and for what were you given? The Holy Ghost. Oh, if your finances shake a little, your conviction has shaken. You just lie down and you say, I, I am depressed. Your God is money. To, why? Why do you have the Holy Ghost? When you don't have the boldness to be able to say to Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. In other matters, we will tremble as we answer you. But in this matter, we are not careful. Our God is able to deliver us. And just in case he feels that delivering us will not glorify him, even yet, we will not bow to your image. We have a God. We have our own king in the kingdom of heaven. I won't bow to yours. Those, those guys, that, that was not natural power. It's galvanization. The ones that speak for Satan, the ones that speak for the kingdom of darkness, they are diligent. They are faithful because Satan threatens his subjects and he threatens them into compliance. But we, God, is a God of love. He will travel with you as much as you want to travel. He will leave you if you want to stay docile. He will use preachers to beckon upon you. To beckon upon you. But you are the one that is left with the choice whether you want to move or not. And he will never violate your right to free choice. So your life as it is now is a perfect reflection of your, your dream about God. Your life now as it is now. The extent to which you have gone in God is the extent to which you desire to go. If you like the way you are, it is based on your decision. If you don't like the way you are, it is based on your decision. But what is lacking is not the ability because we have the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. He said these things, the capacity we now have because of the Holy Spirit that is in us is a matter that angels desire to look into. It's a mystery. We are going to pray in a moment. Hallelujah. Because of the evening service, uh, I don't want to trouble you. There are, few, there are seven points that I have to give you. Seven things that is expected to be seen in your life now that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll give you two. Number one is conviction. 
a conviction that runs deep, so deep, so deep that you can defy any power. A conviction that runs so deep that you are willing to accept hot in order to stay aligned with God. Whenever you see a man of conviction, it means that man knows the Holy Spirit. If you, if you can't break him, he's rooted, he's grounded. He sees his life and his conviction as one. You cannot separate him from his conviction. If you want him to stop the way of his conviction, then you need to take his life. When you see that rugged conviction, nothing can shake it, nothing can bend it. Even when you tie him to the stake, his confession does not change. That is a proof that his life is stronger than the flesh and bone that you see. The convictions run deep. They run deep because he does business in deep waters. We have a generation that lacks conviction. And that's why we need to question the Holy Ghost that we received. We need to question it. We need to question it. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Because our ancestors modeled a life that was heavy on conviction as a sign that it was not by power. It was not by might. But it was by the Spirit of God. Are you there? Number two, evidence that you have met the Holy Spirit bountifully is that you are no longer subject to manipulation. Only people that are weak in the spirit can be manipulated. They do an enchantment over you and it begins to walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a sign that you are still weak in the units of the spirit. There is only one that is given the license to manipulate you and he is called Holy Ghost. If other things can manipulate you, it means that your destiny is not guaranteed. You can be swayed off. You can be resisted. You can be stopped. The man that is deep in the Holy Spirit cannot be manipulated. No. No. Your end point is sure because there's only one driving force that is propelling your life in one direction. I was, I was telling my brother Gideon, he's a dear brother to me, I went for U.S. visa interview. And when they checked us in, screened us, we went through the security post and came into the open floor. You know what? The tension, do you know what? You see, the tension that was in that room, there was no way you could deny that you were insulated from it. The tension, it is that day I believe that when your soul is active, it's actually transmitting frequencies. Yeah. Is that there? I believe it. When your soul is troubled. There, there was a household of tension that was... But you know what? Before we came into that tension, we had prayed in tongues. I had soared in the spirit. Even though I was high in spirit, I still felt the tension. But the tension, yeah, it was still there. It was still a reality that was there. But it was not influencing me. Now, you are not following. Now, the law of lift, is, it doesn't suspend the law of gravity. It's just superior to the law of gravity. So as the plane begins to take off, it is taking off because of the law of lift. 
And if the engine has the capacity to sustain that law, it would defy gravity as if gravity does not exist. So I came into the place and I could feel the tension. But you see, my spirit was anointed. I was operating on a law that was higher than the tension that was in the room. And uh, the tension increases when you see either the blue paper or the pink. Somebody's at the window saying, it, 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 I saw somebody, he <coughs> began to do like this. <laughs> the tension generated a dance without music. <coughs> and guess what? After the dance, you left with a blue paper. You know, the way we know that you have been rejected, the U.S. people made it simple. After you finish your talk, you will see the, you, some will put their hand in their pocket and they'll be talking like this. And like the other person, he, his, his leg was going like this. Now, when you are done, we will know your fate by the color of paper that the person inside the cubicle gives you. If you see blue, what does blue mean? Deny. What of red? And um, what is why why pink? Why red? Okay, there are two. There are okay, based on the class. Okay. So in the room, while we were queuing up, one blue was going, another blue. The windows were like in Lagos, I think it's like eight to ten. And blue was raining, blue. <laughs> and the more blues break out, the more the tension in the room. <laughs> God used that one to teach me how Satan has swayed people out of their test. It was intense. It was intense. And so because we went with my small daughter, they said, no, no, no. Leave the line. Let's process your own so that you can go out. So I now stood close to the window. So I was able to hear the discussion this time. The, the man there said he, he wants to go to Disneyland. That was his. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh because if you laugh under that tension, somebody might stab you. That I want to do. So, I, that he, that he wants to visit Disneyland. So the guy in the cubicle now asked him, have you paid for hotel reservation? This? He said, yeah, he's paid. The guy now viewed it. He didn't know that they could see everything. The hotel he paid for, he only paid to stay there for three hours. <laughs> so the, the man asked, from what I'm seeing here, you only book for three hours. I'm confused now. So the guy, that was when I did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. As funny as this thing is, nobody laughed. <laughs> because of the tension. Jesus Christ. Nobody could have the grace to laugh. There was no grace. So there were two windows there that I could access. The great one said, go to the window where this man was rejected, the man that was dancing. Go there. And in 10 minutes, they had given us. You can decide not to be manipulated by going high in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stop there. There are seven. I'll give you two. Conviction is a sign. When you see everybody manipulated, but somebody is, is exempted, ah, another spirit is upon him. Are you following me? Number three, the man 
that has a relationship with the Holy Ghost can see possibility in the midst of stark impossibility. The economy that is at work within his heart is different from the economy that is at work from the standpoint of his senses. He can see beyond his senses. He can understand beyond his senses. He can even rejoice when the circumstances are not suggestive of rejoicing. You remember that Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. Are you? No, not. Was he at the tomb? No, not at the tomb. What the Bible says, and he rejoiced in the spirit. And he said, Father, thank you. Because you have kept this thing from the wise and you have re re revealed it to the simple. He rejoiced in the spirit. It means he had his own temperature and pressure inside that was different from what the environment was suggesting. When you see a man that can, that in the midst of trouble, he says, ah, we are close to breakthrough. And there's nothing like that suggested. He's receiving from another transmitter. Those are the kind of people that frustrate witches. Because the power that witches have can only stir up the environment. They cannot affect the condition of your heart inside. They frustrate witches. The witches are expecting that you should be depressed now. But you come with a laughter. You crack jokes. Because you are living off the atmosphere that is rooted in your spirit. That is a proof that you have met the Holy Ghost. So you don't operate by the temperature. You don't operate by the pressure of the circumstances. You operate by the pressure and the temperature of what is going on within you. And it's only the Holy Spirit that can furnish the temperature of faith in your heart. It's the only one that can impart you with faith. Are you there? Number what? Four. four. Number four, only men that know the Holy Spirit can see the future. Future. For the Bible says that he will show you things to come. Nothing makes you more strategic in sales, in marketing, in purchases, in business, much more than knowing future trends. Nothing. We were praying one day and then the Holy Ghost now said, that bush there, that bush, go and buy land there. So I went into the bush. The only house that was there was the house of the landlord where I bought the lands from. So, and the lands, they were so cheap and then we even bargained because there was, it, it was a swampy area. We said, no, this is not land. This one is water. We are not, they don't sell water, it's land. <laughs> it's land they sell. Hallelujah. So we bought those ones, expanses, so cheap. And we left the place. Then the landlord will call me from Lagos and say, are you interested in my debt? I say, I'm not interested. If you are not interested, come and buy more land. More land. So I say, okay, because we are trying to save you now. The, the idea now is not land we want to buy, it's to save your life. That is going towards debt. The price, the price for salvation is different from the price of land. <laughs> that was how we bought it, all this land. Then they now made road. Then the place became four million. What was how much was it? One fifty. And even when it was four million, we were not selling. Because the place became strategic. Hallelujah. Because future trends, it can, it can, you don't need to go to Harvard. People that I, I know people, some people in Harvard that are poor. 
they, they went, they got certificate of, of dexterity in, in business, but they are still struggling. What the Bible says it will show you things to come. It will show you things to come. Just one showing can end your poverty problem. Why not invest in the Holy Ghost? He will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. We build that place and put gate. And even the landlord now can't enter the gate. You have to stand outside and then wave like this. <laughs> he will show you things to come. I will stop there. I want you to study too. Study. Things to come. Things to come. That's how God encourages you when nothing is happening around you. He just shows you something that is to come. Then the rejoicing of what you have seen, you trivialize your current. You know it's a passage. Not a terminal. It will show you things. Things to come. Things to come. Things to come. We are going to pray. He wants to extend the frontiers of his kingdom. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. He wants to bring the reign of heaven upon the face of the earth. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. He wants to subdue the enemies of Christ in our generation and the witches that plundered the destinies of many in your family. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. He wants to strengthen us with might by his spirit in our inner man. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Oh, he wants to make the weak strong, wants to make the poor rich. He wants to make the cursed blessed. That's why he gave the Holy Ghost. Hey. He wants to empower so that we can cause the armies of the aliens to turn backward. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Sent down from heaven to establish the reign of heaven upon the face of the earth. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So the question is, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Is it true that it's the Holy Ghost you received? That you have, the giants around your life are not yet falling. There's no evidence that you have extra power beyond your, your, your mental strength and your biceps. Father, strengthen us. Take us beyond this docile level. Take us beyond this docile level. Take us into the heights of empowerment. Let the sons of Anak fall. Someone needs to cry desperately for himself. Cry desperately for his soul. Cry desperately for his life. Cry desperately for his life. Hey! Kido bokos higher. Linko Preski, are you a victim of manipulation? Oh my, oh my. What you need is another measure of his spirit. Another measure of his spirit. Not everyone can be manipulated. The Holy Ghost! The Holy Ghost! Sheliko Presko Filandele Mantecusia Prahatala Mobreheske Kombeheza Iko Pre Mahaiskopila Asketo Benda We can perform more than this You can become greater than this You can become stronger than this You can become more powerful than this More resourceful More dogged 
the Holy Ghost. Sent down from heaven. Hosike Brekosketo Bonde Naiko Braskito Balakandeli Zemonte Siko Bramina Soke in Lahaite Bunda Askito Broko Tomina Kante Robinan Sonde Esketa Mandoli Biga Bakose Katali Mondeli Zemina Iko Brasketo Mina Kantela Mombre Heska Tubra Hanakadia Jaminan Toske, Brisco Fatabo, Roba Sike, Mahais Kompalane, Isamina Kubria Tababon Seke. Yes, we have stopped looking at the infirmities of our flesh because the Holy Ghost has power to swallow up our infirmities. The Bible says that it is the Spirit, it is the Spirit that helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we shall pray as we ought but the spirit himself he maketh intercession for the saints in groanings that cannot be altered you can go beyond the weariness you can go beyond the insufficiency you can enter into might you can enter into capacity if you know the holy ghost you cannot fail no you cannot fail men fail but god cannot fail for with men these things might be impossible but not with god as a combra hika bababaila ranto seka lando bokola ye mama mama ya rukas keto brindo kobriala babonsha niske luke baba masuke laite labros kote masiko bramanaita kofoske de brenta makudi brusia Ila praske tobe na kade da danso praske de. Para na suples, rahoske ta brinda baboka duala. Mendo robo santo kisko brela mahase na ida. Realo bobo ria kaske tobe na light. You can surmount that infirmity. You can surmount that weakness. You can fly with wings like the eagles. You can go beyond the manipulation. There is a place. There is a place in God where you will find rest. You can go beyond the confusion to the place where you can hear the still small voice. With men, these things might be impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. All things are possible.
not ever experienced. The things that you are afraid of are actually afraid of you. Oh, 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 oh,